Okay, here we are, number seven, guys. So we're given a function given by a y equals 2x all multiplied by x squared minus 1 to the power 5. And we need to show that the, the derivative is given by this function here. And then hence we need to find the set of values x which the derivative itself from part a is greater or equal to 0. So looking at part a first, how do we get this? So this is just a simple case of differentiating, so not too bad. So we need to do this using the, um, the, the product rule. Okay, so let's look at part A again. So by the method of the product rule, we just have to label some terms. So we can call firstly 2x u. And we can call um, v, the second term, which is x squared minus 1 to the power 5. Okay. In turn, there's something known as the fast product rule, but for the sake of um, you know accuracy, we'll do it like this. Now, all you have to do is differentiate both. So let's call this one u prime, which is a derivative. So the derivative of 2x will give us 2. And the derivative of v, well, we need to use the chain rule. And the chain rule tells us that we have to you know, differentiate the inside of the function and then drop the power. So the derivative of the inside is just 2x. And then dropping the power would be multiplied by 5. And then we drop, then we decrease everything. So this would be x squared minus 1, and the power decreases by 1. So it's 4. Okay, easy. And then 2x times 5 is, well, 10x. So let's just tidy this up. So we've got 10x all multiplied by x squared minus 1 to the power of 4. Hence, by the product rule, all we need to do now is simply um, um, connect these. So we could say, firstly, that the product rule tells us that it's going to be u times v prime plus v times u prime. So the final solution is uv prime plus vu prime is going to equal to 2x multiplied by this function here. So 2x times 10x will give us 20x squared bracket x squared minus 1 to the power of 4 plus, now next one, v times u prime. So this quantity times 2, we just, we just literally glue together to get 2 times x squared minus 1 to the power of 5. Now, the function wants us to keep in terms of power 4. So we need to reduce this power by 1. So what we could do, we can partition this as to the power 4 and to the power of 1. So let's drop this power to 4 and stick another one next to it. That's it. And now we just collect like terms. So let's collect in terms of x squared minus 1 to the power 4. So this will tell us that we're going to have, therefore, in terms of x squared minus 1 to the power 4, we should have, on the left side, firstly, we have 20x squared. Okay, so this is just factorizing. Plus, on the right side, we're left with 2 times x squared minus 1. And if you expand it, we're going to get 2x squared minus 2. And lastly, now, again, collecting, like, you know, tidying this up for the final for the final part, we should have. Um, so, yeah, making it, putting it in front, actually, so we have a gx in front. So this is our gx. This will sum up, summarize to 22x squared minus 2. So we're going to have bracket 22x squared minus 2 equal uh, multiplied by x squared minus 1 to the power 4. And that's it, guys. Our gx is therefore 22x squared minus 2. Okay, so let's have a look at part b now. So, from part B, and keeping the derivative on the next page, we need to find the set values of x for which this derivative is greater than or equal than 0. So, all we can literally write is greater than or equal to 0. And yeah, this is just a case of solving now. So, let's have a go at solving this. Okay, so we can split this into two parts. We could say, firstly, that um, 22x squared minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0, and the second term is greater than or equal to 0. Let's write it down. So, 22x squared minus 2 greater than or equal to 0, or x squared minus 1 to the power of 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Oh, so this looks like a difference of two squares. And this one also looks like a difference of two squares, in fact. So let's see what we can show here. So because it's greater than 0, firstly, we can plus 2 across and divide by 22. This will give us x squared is greater than or equal to 2 over 22, which is 1 over 11. And it's just square root in this. So because the function is greater, this will tell us that um, if we imagine a derivative curve, then this would mean that the answers are going to be on the outside of the curve. So let me just try and draw this 
a simple sketch. So I can't, I'm not going to draw this accurately because I, uh, we need more points. So suppose the curve is something like this or something. Because the function is greater or equal than zero, that means we're interested in the outer part. So for example, this range here, any function which is greater than zero. So this means that the solution, if we can square this one, the results would be outside these intervals. The same applies for here as well. So basically, squaring this one will give us plus minus 1 over 11. So root 1 over 11, so x here. So this point here would be x equals minus square root of 1 over 11. And this point here would be x equals positive root 1 over 11. Okay. So, so far, this is what the ranges of values can take. Now, how about the one over here? Well, first things first, because it's powered by 4, we can... Assume there's four quantities, so we can ignore that. So then, therefore, we're left with x squared minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. And this is the difference of two squares. So, therefore, x would therefore be x squared would be greater than or equal to 1. Same rules apply, except now that on the left hand side, we accept values which is less than um, minus 1. Square root, square root of this one is 1. And on the right side, we accept values that are greater than plus positive 1. However, this interval is this this these thirds are smaller than this one. So in fact, the minus one and one is included in the gx equation, gx part. So therefore, we can say that the final range of solution, because remember, minus one is somewhere here and plus one is somewhere here. So the final solution is going to be um, x. Hold on, let me try and make it a neater way. Therefore, we can say x takes values less than minus square root of 1 over 11, or less than equal, or x takes values greater or equal than positive root 1 over 11. And that's it. Now let's move on to the final part. Okay, so the final part of question 7. Arguably, I think this was the hardest question in the paper by far, because you actually need to do a lot of trick identities, and you kind of need to um, use implicit differentiation to actually work out this derivative of y. So, let's have a go. So, I'll show you my way. In fact, there are two ways to solve this, but I'm going to show you um, an easier way. Okay, so, without further ado, let's go. So, given that x equals the log of sec 2y, find its derivative in terms of x. So, the first thing first is that I would want to get rid of this log function and um, by uh, multiplying, by taking exponential on both sides. So, over here, we could say the log, taking exponential on both sides, we should get ex equals sec 2y. Next, I would like to um, rewrite this as 1 over cos 2y. So we're going to have ex equals 1 over cos 2y. The, the main idea is to always work in terms of sine and cos because you can get every single answer. Sec, tan, etc. are very, can be kind of confusing. Now, what we want to do here is to multiply cos 2y across and then we're going to get cos 2y e, uh, ex times ex equals 1. Now, I'm going to stop it for a second, and I'm going to um, define cos 2y. So, we can, if we, so if we're going to define cos 2y, we could divide e to power x across, and this will give us e to the negative x. So, on, so up here, I'm going to say, let cos 2y equals e to the negative x. This is going to be very handy later, and I'll show you why. Now, let's go back to the original problem. So over here, I want to differentiate this using implicit differentiation, okay? Yes, implicit. So first things first, we're going to use the, um, the product rule to deal with the left side and differentiate the one later. So using the product rule, the way, the quick way to do it is just differentiate the first term, then copy the second, plus the, uh, copy the first term, then differentiate the second. So the derivative of the, of the cos 2y will give us a, a negative 2 sine 2y times dy of dx. Remember, because it's a y term, the derivative of the 2y will become 2 dy dx. Okay? And then you copy the ex. Plus, now we copy the cos 2y, and we differentiate the ex, which is ex. And to differentiate the 1, well, it's just 0. So, what do we do here now? So now we have our derivative. We can, we can rewrite this in terms of dy over dx. And before that, we can cancel out any common term. So let's cancel out ex, because that's gone. Next thing we want to do is to um, plus 2 sine 2y dy dx across and divide the whole term by 
2 sine 2y. So rewriting everything, you should get something like this. dy dx equals cos 2y all over 2 sine 2y. Put a bracket around them. Now, do you remember earlier when I said let cos 2y equals e to the negative x? Well, <laughs> this is going to be useful. So now we can finally find what sine 2y is in terms of x and cos 2y because we know what cos 2y is. So the fastest way to do this is to use the, the most popular trig identity. And that's it, guys. That's to say, let sine squared, let's call, let's call it sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equal 1. And now we know what cos, cos um, theta is, is um, e negative x. But let's, let's solve this in terms of sine, yeah? So if we're going to find the sine theta, we can subtract cos squared theta and then square root. So we're left with something like sine theta equals 1 minus cos squared theta all square root. Now, theta in this case, it will be 2y. So this means that it's right here. Sine 2y equals 1 minus cos squared 2y all rooted. Cos 2y is e negative x, so that means cos squared 2y is e, is, um, uh, the, the e to the power of negative 2x. So this is e power minus 2x. So we can write the top here, so therefore sine 2y equals the square root of 1 minus e negative 2x. And that's it guys. Plug both of these into the final equation and you're going to get, therefore, dy dx equals e negative x all over 2 times the square root of e minus e negative 2x. Huh, voila. And yes, this works. I tested it with another method, which is using cot. But yeah, this is the way to do it. And um, hopefully you guys got something like this. And yeah, other than that, um, let me know if you've got any questions. And um, I shall see you all down the road. And ciao.